Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we're going to create essentially a mini adventure, if you will. I've been doing this series where I'm using the uh, basic expert book, BX, of Dungeons and Dragons to create adventures using the kind of the scenarios. And, you know, they've generally been set up around this idea of playing multiple sessions, uh, full dungeons. But one of the things the expert book says is to have kind of kind of in your pocket, if you will, uh, some adventure sites. So if the player's just kind of wandering around and you enter into something, you've got something going on. So I thought I'd create this little adventure location with a hook and we'll kind of see where it takes us. So I'm gonna base it around one of my favorite monsters, which is Medusa, I talked about this before. And I had this idea that you could have a Medusa that is of course vicious and evil and running like that, but you could also run a Medusa as if, you know, like the more like the original uh, legend, where she's basically cursed, right? So I have this idea, it's almost very Disney-ish, but you know, um, of a Medusa that doesn't want to turn people to stone and they want to interact with people. So they've they've set up their, their place where they live behind this waterfall. And the waterfall is very beautiful and people come and kind of clean in the water around it. There's a pool there and children come and it's very beautiful. And what the Medusa will do is she'll sit on the other side of the, the waterfall. She can see through it a bit and she will, you know, observe life and try to enjoy life that way. Um, but unfortunately, as the story starts or the adventure starts, a, a young child uh, has was standing there staring at the waterfall itself when maybe something happened above, maybe a log fell in or something and the water split, and she was turned to stone. So the adventures are being brought in with the knowledge that there is a Medusa. It is living in a cave behind a waterfall, and they should be eliminating this threat. The the parents, maybe the child is, you know, uh, the daughter or son of a, a a miller or somebody who's got some money. They are are hoping to be able to get the child turned back, so they've recovered the the stone body. Um, and you know, right now they have it placed almost like kind of in kind of a little morbid, but kind of in a graveyard. Basically, they put it out there as a, as a, a testament to the child and hoping that someday they could, you know, raise enough gold or whatever. But right now, they'd rather spend the gold to hire the PCs to take out that Medusa, and that's kind of where we're going to start this. So I think this could go a lot of different ways. Of course, if the PCs spend more time investigating, they can find that this was done kind of by mistake or however you want to look at it. And we can go from there. And if, or they'll just go in there and kill a Medusa, right? They can do it a lot of different ways. Um, one of the things I thought would be kind of useful would be, so I'm just gonna quickly show you my notes here. This is my iPad. Um, we've done this before. This is just the drawing thing. We're gonna draw some maps, but let's take a look at my notebook for the things I jotted down. So Medusa behind the waterfall. Waterfall has minor charm on it that maybe make people stare at it, so that could be part of it as well. Um, she watches from behind admiring people. A young girl gets turned to stone, so the party is brought in to eliminate the threat. So if they destroy the Medusa, they can find her journal, which will describe how she's cursed, right? So that's kind of make you feel bad about it. Um, but also a treasure map that leads to a hoard, including a magic user scroll that has a stone to flesh scroll, a spell on it. Now, it could be the Medusa knows that this scroll exists, and maybe she can offer it to the party if... if you know, if they try to talk to her, right? She can say, I have this treasure map. I know it goes to this place. It has this scroll. I can't use it, but uh, some kind of magic user could use it and we could bring the, the little girl back to life, right? Um, perhaps at the location, maybe the Medusa doesn't know this. Maybe there's another scroll as well. that's like a remove curse or something. And maybe, or maybe just the kindness of doing this will, you know, if you want to have that kind of story, if you want it to be more tragic, that's also fine. And of course, there'll be treasure there. So if the player characters go in there and slay the Medusa, they'll get some gold. If they decide to pursue this stone to flesh thing, there'll be a treasure map. So that's kind of part two of this. So let's get into this and see what we need. I made some notes. Um, we're going to need some kind of a background, which I just kind of told you. Um, we're going to need a simple map for the Medusa layer. It shouldn't be very big because this is going to be hopefully the beginnings of an adventure. And then we're going to do a treasure map and then the actual map of that dungeon. I'm going to try to make this relatively short, so we might save the actual map at the end of the treasure for another adventure. Maybe it could be any of the other uh, ideas that we have, but let's see how, how long this takes. So let's get to it. Number one, let's draw the map for the Medusa's Lair. I'm not going to go too crazy uh, here. You can look for all kinds of maps. We know it's a waterfall, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of draw a side view. Um, you know, we've got the, the water coming. This is Procreate, by the way, people ask me all the time. Um, we've got the water coming, it's gonna rush down. Obviously, get, there's a cutaway. And then we'll say there's a pool, it's a relatively shallow pool where people, uh, you know, bathe and stuff. And in this pool is, uh, frankly, where the Medusa, you know, watches. So we've got the water 
you want to make it blue maybe so I can see what I'm doing. We've got the water like rushing over, you know, pouring down to a waterfall and filling up this area, right? The Medusa's lair itself, of course, is inside the cave. So we don't need all that. We got the general idea of what it looks like, right? So this is a little side view. It can help, uh, you know, to, to kind of illustrate what's going on here. Okay, so now we're going to actually draw her cave back to black again. Effectively, we're going to have, this is going to be obviously an upper view now. The, the river is kind of running like this. The waterfall falls down, the cave then enters, you know, we get a cave entrance, which goes back into this cave network. Now, of course, the Medusa is living in here, and she goes out at night maybe to, to collect berries or hunt or whatever. You can make this more than just a room, which is what I would do, because obviously she doesn't want to be found. So clearly people probably go behind the waterfall sometimes. So there's going to be effectively a cave back here um, of some size. And then in that cave, we're going to have some kind of a, a, a secret or concealed door. Right. Uh, this could be just as simple as a pile of stones built up, or maybe there's actually a secret door there. Um, and that's going to lead into some kind of ancient, you know, dungeon or structure that was here before where the Medusa actually, you know, is living. So this could be any number of rooms, but I think we'll keep it relatively simple. Now, before we go too far into this, let's think about um, the Medusa for a second. So she can't um, have any kind of there can't be any animals in here or whatever that uh, the, for the party to fight that could be turned to stone, right? So nothing they can see. So let's take a quick look at our basic book. Um, this is the, again, the Mulvey basic book. Let's just take a quick look at our monsters. I think that there are, there's a couple of monsters. I believe the giant shrew um, is actually blind. Okay, so we've had the giant shrew. Now the giant shrew um, are basically, uh, you know, relatively small. But they are, I mean, they're giant, right? Um, you know, they are, right, they, like bats, they use very high squeak to see areas around. They can listen to echoes, close may see, the sounds will blind them. So basically, they are blind. It, effectively, I don't know, anybody there that knows about animals might be like, they're not actually blind. Uh, for for the, the effect of this, they're blind. So we can use giant shrews, and a, a layer of giant shrews, so if there's a family in here, it could be up to one to eight giant shrews. They're only one hit die, they're armor class four. I don't necessarily predict this to be a really high level module, to be honest with you. Um, they can just more or less be there to be there, right? So we can actually have the fact that there's a giant shrew lair. Perhaps they are what, what's out here. So I'm actually gonna, right here in room number one, I'm going to actually make this one the giant shrew lair. Then, then we got a secret door, and then we're gonna go into another chamber in here where that'll be number two and then let's just say that there's this is a bit of a a structure i'm just going to draw a couple of another rooms connected to this this was some kind of structure before it doesn't actually matter what it was i know that some people say oh you got to know what the thing was but i'm not one of those people so yeah. for me um this is totally fine to just have this be some kind of a structure perhaps it was a guard post or some kind of a thing um before it's just going to be a series of rooms that are connected uh, via some doors. Okay, I'm back to the iPad. Um, I've drawn a couple rooms here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a series of secret doors so that the Medusa herself has the ability to move around this place. She's gonna try to avoid people if she can, because at first she starts off at being, you know, again, not really looking for trouble, but if the party is looking to kill her, huh, then she's gonna try to, you know, avoid them. And if necessary, she will, in fact, you know, fight and kill. So we'll say this is like some kind of a, you know, whoever was here before was very paranoid and they created kind of a, a series of passageways to get around. So we'll have uh, what is effectively four rooms here, plus the hallway. Um, and I think we'll put the treasure in room number four, you know, behind a locked door. In room three, the door will be open, something like that, right? And maybe in room three, we'll put something else in there that might be, um, might be detrimental to the player characters. Maybe she's growing... Um, and again, I don't want her to be evil, so let's put something in there. Let's put Shriekers in there. So let's make some quick notes here. I'm going to again go back to my notes. We get the Medusa map. We're going to go... All right, so room one is a family of giant shrews. Um, they are... Uh, so there's up eight of them, right? Yeah, shrews. One to eight. 
Number two is, uh, we'll deal with it in a second. Number three is going to have Shriekers. That will help her. You know, obviously, uh, if somebody's coming for me, Medusa. Medusa's room with treasure. Um, and I think that's it, right? There's just four rooms. So let's go back. Yeah, so room three has got the Shriekers. Room four is the Medusa itself. Room two is the is the main room. Actually, well, she probably doesn't want Shriekers yelling every time she walks by, so they probably wouldn't be in that main room. Oh, and room four is going to be locked. Well, I'll make a note of that when we go back over this. Let's find something for room two. So again, I feel like this is a fairly low, even though Medusa is obviously very deadly, I think this is maybe like a second level adventure so far. It's not crazy... We want the player characters not to be over overconfident to run in and kill this Medusa because then you'll lose that whole backstory thing, right? So we want to make it so that they are going to have to be smart about this. Um, so if we go to our wandering monsters here, let's go level two wandering monsters and see what we might be able to put in that room. Oozes, mm, lizards, pixies. Oh, it could be interesting if there's a pixie in there. Um, flies, baboons, all those things can see really well. So I'm not sure that that's ideal for us here. Um, but I also feel like maybe, even though technically, like, beetles and stuff can get turned to stone, right? There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to. I'm just going to say that she's maybe careful. Let's just put some fire beetles in there. Like, I, I always like fire beetles, and they'll also be the way that she can have light, right? So, room number two is going to have fire beetles. And they are, um... One to eight of those. Okay. So effectively, they're going to have giant shrews in the first room, which again, not, not particularly tough, but there's several of them. Then there's going to be fire beetles, so there'll be some light, which means that when they open up that door, it'll set off the shrieker if they don't already have a torch or whatever. In room four, this is going to be locked. And then that's going to have the Medusa's treasure, which we know will include... A treasure map. Okay. We already have the other nodes up top, so I'm not going to write that down again. So this is basically the Medusa layer, right? It's really, really simple. And in fact, if you were doing like a, a short one shot, you could probably use this without the little backstory that I created. You know, you could just have somebody go in there. It, if you put some wandering monsters on the way, a little bit of a hex crawl to get to this place, this in and of itself could be a little final battle area. It's not terrible in and of itself. It's its own thing. But again, I, I want this to be the start of an adventure. So now we're going to have a treasure map. So let's. So that's the Medusa's Lair. Okay, so we know there's a treasure map, and what we want to do is set up effectively another dungeon, right? So what I'm going to do is, because it's going to be a second level adventure, I think, uh, I'll pick something from the third level wandering monster list. Now, looking at this list, there's a lot of things that could be the main monster there. Um, something like a living statue could be guarding the the, the treasure chest. Um, you know, things like it could be full of jellies or it could be a tomb. So it might have like a, a white guarding it. But I feel like I like the idea that somebody placed this treasure here and then they were planning on going back to it. So it needs to be a place that probably wouldn't be like something like a white. Right. So I'm thinking an ogre would be good. Because maybe now an ogre has taken over the space. The, the party's not going to know there's going to be an ogre there, right? They just know it's buried in this cave. And they're going to move through the wilderness to find it. And when they get there, the cave's going to have an ogre in it. So I think we're going to use an ogre as our main bad guy. So um, just make a note of that. So again, there is a second level party. We don't need to have a lot of ogres, but we're going to want to, you know, it's a layer of ogres because there'll be more treasure than just the, uh, the thing. And then the other thing we want to do is we're going to um, we're going to have a wandering monster list as they travel through the wilderness. That's kind of what I want to do here. We're going to run this kind of like uh, an abstracted hex crawl. Like we're not going to make an actual hex map. We're just going to kind of have it take X number of days and they're going to roll for wandering monsters and we're just going to narrate. We're going to keep it real simple. I've talked about this before with travel. So let's go to expert. So we're looking at the expert book now, even though this is only second level, right? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, they're going to travel through a forest to a cave with an ogre. That's basically what the treasure map is going to be. So we're going to look at this and I'm going to 
look at the uh, on the side here I see woods and there's eight options for things you could run into and what we're going to do is instead of like rolling on this each time we're going to make our own wandering monster list and we're going to use a, uh, a 2d6 roll because that's generally what I prefer to do um, so let's just quickly go over and I'll show you how we're going to set that up so I'm going to go back to here so uh, let's see treasure map leads to ogre cave with treasure buried ogre is unaware okay so that we're going to need a map for that but we'll deal with that in a second overland travel let's say um 1d6 plus three days. Check each day for wandering. For I'm just going to call it encounter, not wandering monster. Encounter. And um, what we're going to do here is, and you can make all kinds of adventure maps, of wandering encounter type maps where they might be they run into some kind of a hazard. Actually, that's what we're going to do. There we go. So well, let's play with this a little bit. So we're going to check each day for an encounter. Adding, okay, period, encounter on a roll of six on a d6, period, each day, add one to the roll until an encounter happens, then reset. Okay, so in other words, they're going to, it's going to take a minimum of four days, so they're probably going to encounter at least one thing. Um, so let's make our thing. So if we're doing a 2d6 roll, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, and we have eight things here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in, in, I'm going to disperse within them stuff. And what's funny is the first thing here listed is men, which I don't mind having been the first thing because I feel like this should be a relatively deserted area. So we're going to look at the men list, right? So um, we go over here and we're going to go, and I'm just going to roll and then we'll, if it's weird, we'll just not use it. But I think I'm going to roll and see what happens because we can usually always make things work, right? Uh, woods for men, I'm rolling. I got 10 bandits, so that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to skip three for now. I'm gonna go to four and I'm going to, we can shake these up and put them in different spaces if we want. So the second one is a flyer. So I'm gonna look for, so that's suitable men. I'm gonna look for suitable flyer for the flyer. We have mountains, desert, and other. So I'm gonna roll it on other. I'm gonna roll a d12 here. I got a nine, robber flies, cool. Probably should show you the expert book, that would make more sense, right? There we go. Uh, okay, so I'm over here at the upper right-hand corner. So let's see, I'm gonna go to the next one. The next one is uh, humanoid, then insect, then unusual. So humanoid's right here. Three, which is a dryad, which is great for the woods. Then we got insect. So suitable insect is just, there's only one table here. We can see it. I'm going to roll on that one. Uh, five, which is driver ants. Oh, we don't want to run into those. That's for sure. Driver ants are terrible. And what's interesting here, guys, is any one of these could also be a lair. So if you want to take the time to create layers of these things, you can basically make layers for all of them, and they might encounter a layer on the way if you want to play around with that idea. But... I'm not going to do that for this. Uh, unusual. <laughs> okay, so I rolled an 11, which is Medusa, which I'm not going to use because I don't want another Medusa because we already have Medusa. So I'm just going to re-roll that. And I got a 5. A Gorgon. So actually similar, right? Because it's going to... The Gorgon and BX is the... Um, they're like a big bowl made out of metal that will turn you to stone. So that's that's pretty serious. And let's see what else we got. We got animal and then dragon. 
So huh, it's funny, dragon's a so suitable animal. There's actually two for animals, so I'm gonna insert two. So for woods, we got a six, which is a gecko lizard. And I rolled a six again, so I'll roll something else. And a three, which is a panther. So I'm gonna go lizard. Gecko. Panther. Okay. So let's take a quick, oh, and then we got a dragon. So the dragon, again, it's suitable dragon, right? So it doesn't mean an actual dragon necessarily. We'll roll and see. Uh, seven. Yeah, this is an actual dragon. It's a white dragon at that. Cool. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at our list. All right, so if you see here, I've left some space. So what I'm going to do, remember, when you're rolling 2d6, your most common numbers are going to be like the middle, like 6, 7, 8, 9, stuff like that. So I want to look and just make sure that, like, I made sure I put dragon at 12 because that's the most unusual, and 2 is also the most unusual. So I think Gorgon's also really tough, so I'm going to put Gorgon down here. So I'm going to rearrange these. Um, and I'll put bandits bandits closer to the, the normal. I'll probably actually put it... I'm going to remove the ants as well and put bandits here. So I'm just rearranging. I'll put the ants down here. And mostly I'm doing the ants there because I know they're really, really tough. So I don't necessarily want that to be a common thing that they're going to run into. Okay. So now I've got a, a little... Oh, hold on. I need to move the gorgon. Okay. So now I have a few other little things here. I've got three spots. And what we can do is we can now add um, some stuff. So I'm going to go number five. I'm going to add... Magical pool, right? Why not? Uh, number 10, I'm going to add a ruin with dungeon below, right? And again, that's something else we're going to have to roll up if they encounter it. So this is why we want to have some extra dungeons. Um, and number 11, for an outdoor thing, I'm going to, to add... Um, you know, again, something else unusual, a strange weather occurrence. Or animal movement. So again, this is going to be something that we're going to use for flavor. Um, and you can play around with whatever it is. Maybe this animal's running and then they'd be like, what's going on? You can kind of play it up. Uh, now I'm just going to quickly look at the chart again. I'm going to make sure that it makes sense to me. Uh, you know, like uh, ruin with dungeon below, I don't necessarily want to happen that often, so I don't mind having it uh, there. I think I'm actually going to move it up. I'm going to go here to number eight, and I'm going to put strange weather. I'm going to move the dungeon to 11, because again, 11, 12 are going to be uh, not common, right? The, the, higher, the highest and the lowest are going to be the least common. Uh, I'm going to move bandits. I'm going to move the lizard here. I actually like encountering people, and I think the bandits might actually create a interesting roleplay situation, because if the bandits get away or they negotiate, the bandits might follow them, right, and figure out what's going on. So let's look at it again. The most common things that are going to, they're going to encounter are going to be a dryad, a panther, or a strange weather, which is kind of cool, right? I like dryads, so that's always fun. A magical pool is a, fly, a robber fly, uh, driver ant, gorgon. So all these things are things they might possibly encounter on their way. And then once they get to where they're going, then there'll be an ogre cave, right? So, and we need to like create this dungeon. And that's easy. So now the final step here is the ogre cave. And again, this is going to be another simple dungeon. It's an ogre cave. It doesn't have to be crazy, but let's take a quick look at ogres. Okay, so an ogre is pretty tough, right? They are a four plus one hit die for a small party. That's going to be a lot. Um, they are um, in groups of two to 12 in lair, which I don't really want. Um, so I'm probably going to keep to just having a single ogre because really the Medusa is the main that, you know, between the Medusa and the ogre, that's a lot going on here. So I'm going to put a single ogre in here or maybe two ogres and one of them, I will have them be a little bit weaker than the other. Um, and I'll do that not by the hit dice, but I'll do it with, I'll just make a note. So ogre lair, 
with two ogres or one of the ogres only roll two plus one hit dice worth of hit points. So we'll say it's a smaller one or a sickly one, however you want to do it. Now the ogre layer again, I'm going to draw a quick map for it. And the ogre layer is going to have treasure, you know, treasure. It's probably going to have like maybe half to a third of the amount of treasure that, uh, that an ogre would normally have. So their treasure type C plus 1000 gold pieces. And remember that the, the treasure map is going to lead to a buried treasure the ogres don't know about. That's the Medusa's treasure. So that's their treasure. Let's go up to the Medusa. Well, I'll actually put it here. Medusa's treasure. Okay, and Medusa is their treasure type F. And it's gonna have a magic scroll, of course, because that's kind of part of the, that's part of the whole thing here, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna actually just roll up the treasure. That's take some time. So I'm not I'm just gonna to cut to having the treasure and then we'll talk about it a little bit and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so I actually went on the OSC generators. I'll put a link, I've done this before. I probably could have recorded that, but in any case, <laughs> I went on the OSC generators and I rolled rolled treasure for the two. Now the first one is the ogre's treasure. Now remember that there's only like two ogres here out of a possibility of 12, so that's like one six. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to have a full 12 to get the full treasure, but we wanna reduce the treasure if there's less ogres. I'm gonna say we're gonna do about a quarter of this treasure. So looking at this treasure here, I can see that they get a thousand gold, you know, C plus a thousand. So I'll change that to two fifty. This is the the ogres again, um, and they've got pieces of jewelry equal to about twelve hundred. So I'm going to make that about worth about four hundred. So I'm just going to get rid of these two. And now they've got two magic items. One is a spell scroll. One is a potion of growth. I think I will leave one of those two items here. Um, so I'm just going to roll a six sider. If I roll high, I'll keep the scroll. If I roll low, I'll keep the potion. I rolled a five. I'll get rid of the potion of growth and then I'm gonna leave that spell scroll. So this is the stuff the ogre itself is gonna have. Let's get rid of that. And then buried in here under the ground is going to be the Medusa's treasure. Now Medusa's come in a group of one to four and it says that if, even if there's only one Medusa, you would still get full treasure. So I rolled a full treasure for her and we can see that there's 3000 platinum pieces, a rope of climbing, helmet telepathy, sword plus one, potion of invisibility and a scroll. And of course we know the scroll. Unfortunately, the party lucks out here because it's supposed to be a cursed scroll but I'm gonna make that a scroll of flesh to stone. I mean, yeah, stone to flesh rather, because that is what we wanted to put in here. So luckily for the party, they in fact do not end up with a cursed scroll because of that. Um, and that's a heck of a lot of treasure, but they will have had to have defeated somehow the Medusa to, to get here and also the ogre. And if they do that, they will get a ton of treasure. And we've talked about this before. A lot of uh, more modern adventures, sometimes because they're like, that doesn't make sense to the economy. They don't give enough treasure. Um, this is a ton of treasure, but it's also uh, incredibly risky and it's second level. So I don't think this is too bad. So let's do a couple of quick things to kind of clean this up. And number one, I'm just gonna draw the ogre's map. So let's go over here. This is the Medusa's map on this side with the side view and the ogre's cave is literally just going to be a cave. I think that it's probably going to have like uh, a cave opening like this just to make it a little more interesting and we'll have it come back a little bit and then kind of like have a bend to it so that the, you know, you don't see the whole thing when you kind of are, are coming in. So it'll be kind of like this, right? And then what we'll do is we'll put like the treasure here in the corner and then we'll put some like pallets where the ogres sleep and stuff over here. And they can have some, you know, maybe a little fire pit or something right here. So nice and simple. This is the ogre lair. You know, and that's it, right? And then this is the Medusa. So we don't have to go crazy with our maps. This is enough to be able to talk to the players and tell them what's going on without going too, too crazy. Let's go back to our notes and let's make any final summaries here. Okay, so let's just go over this and see what we see. We've got a Medusa lair. It's behind the waterfall. The waterfall has a minor charm that allows people to stare at it. She watches from behind admiring people. A young girl gets turned to stone. Parties brought in to eliminate a threat. All that's good. 
If they destroy the Medusa, they find her journal. So we need to put in the Medusa lair her journal. So I'm going to add some things here, right? So we're going to say the family of giant shrews are in the entryway. Um, there's one to eight of them. So let's actually just roll that now. You know, I'm not going to roll that. We'll play that out right as it goes. And it, reaction rolls and all the other good stuff, right? There's also a secret entrance. I'm going to say that it's a door. Blended with stone wall. Okay, the fire beetles are kind of making their camp there. Uh, there should also be some small tunnels burrowed in the walls where the beetles come and go from. You know, because obviously they have to get in and out, right? They have to eat things. The Shriekers are totally fine. They're just in that room by themselves. Maybe they're cultivated by the Medusa. Who really knows? The Medusa's room is going to be locked. Um, and obviously she'll hide there if need be. Um, room with treasure. Treasure includes the treasure map. To Ogre Lair. Treasure is buried. And again, you can draw this map if you want. Um, overland travel. Via the map. Now, the way I like to do this personally is every day I would just have one of the players roll. If you want and you want to keep it tighter and you like to have control over the adventure, you could pre roll this as well, right? And then you just know, okay, on day three they encounter something. That's also a fine way to do it. They're going to roll a, a D6, but then it's going to take D6 plus three days to go out there. Each day, check for an encounter. On a roll of a six, they have one, but each additional day you'll roll you'll add one. So the first day you're going to say, hey, player one, roll a d6, they roll a three. Then you say, second day, hey, player two, roll a d6, they roll a four, and you add one, so it's five, so still no encounter. Day three, hey, player three, roll a d6, they roll a five, plus two is seven, so now you have an encounter, right? And then it resets again. So the next, when player four rolls, it's just a straight d6 again, so they don't keep hitting things. Then you're going to roll on this table, they'll have their encounter, so it mixes it up a little bit. One of them might even have a small dungeon layer, which you could use anything for. I'm not going to develop that here in this one, but, um, you know, we can figure it out. Uh, maybe that's just a tomb, right? Maybe you just, if you if you do it on the spot and you had not planned, you could just put like a, a random thing down there, put a, a, a white down there under the ground with some treasure. You know, you can do that. Um, and of course, they could might encounter a white dragon, which in the woods might not be super suitable. So it might just be the dragons flying overhead. We've talked about that kind of stuff before. The treasure map is going to lead to the ogre cave, which is buried. The ogre isn't aware that it's there. The ogre has two ogres. One of them is a, a kind of a lesser powerful ogre, because again, this is a second level adventure. The ogres themselves own a piece of jewelry, some gold, and they have a spell scroll, which of course they can't use. Um, and then the Medusa treasure, which is buried. I'll put buried in a chest. Um, is... 3,000 platinum pieces, which is a lot of treasure. A rope of climbing, which is awesome. Helmet telepathy. Sword plus one plus three versus dragons. A potion of invisibility. And the scroll that they're looking for, which will bring that little girl back from being turned to stone. And either kind of redeem the Medusa or, you know, if the Medusa's dead, it'll really save the little girl. So maybe extra extra heroism for the party works out really well, right? This is what we wanted. We kind of created this situation where they thought, hey, we're going to go in and kill this Medusa you know, the little girl is, is is lost, a little boy or whatever. But at this point, they'll have a chance to possibly save them, which I think is kind of a cool way to do it. All right, guys. So let me know what you think of this kind of shorter adventure format. I'm going to go back to using, I think there's four or five more in the BX book with like longer adventures that can be multiple sessions. But this is great for a one shot. Um, let me know how you guys might use this or if you might change it or whatever in the comments below. Let me know maybe some other little basic scenarios we can kind of work I've got a few that I have in my head that I want to kind of throw out there. But if you guys have like a really brief idea, I might be able to use one of those and expand on it. Let me know. So in any case, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Do all that goodness. Uh, be sure to ring the bell so you get notifications. And I'll see you next time.